But it was it was quite interesting. Um, guys, I don't know what you made of the IGP's appearance yesterday. I I thought the entire thing would be held in camera. I was pleasantly surprised to see portions of it out in the public. Okay. At least the, the parts we saw. <laughs> okay, so let me let me you know unpack it in two ways. So the committee's responsibility as um, given to them by the speaker is to first of all verify the authenticity of the tape that provoked the statement that was made by the Honorable Kofibua, Deputy uh, Minority Leader in Parliament, which statement urged the Speaker um, to cause an investigation to be done into claims that there were attempts to remove the IGP because some people thought that his continuous stay in office would undermine the uh, current administration's intentions to break the aid. Um, when the speaker referred the matter to the um, the attaching committee, one of the things he asked them to do, uh, which I stated earlier, is to authenticate the tape. And beyond that, they are also to make related recommendations um, and findings, and then also orders that may be necessary to um, refine what happens within the police service. So when Bugri Nabu appeared before the committee, he actually confirmed that, yes, there was a recording. The voices on the tape are A and B, and the recording was done for a particular reason. Now, so that requirement of whether or not the tape could be authenticated, mm -hmm. we took a, a step closer to finding out whether the tape is actually, you know, one that's valid. Now, when the other two people appeared before the committee, of course, you heard what they said. And there were even claims that, oh, that was not the only tape that was recorded and that there were other tapes. Mm -hmm. So the, the committee received an additional tape or some other tapes, which then formed the basis for saying that, okay, we need to bring Bugri Nabu back because it would seem that in the submissions that were made by um, COP uh, Mensa, for instance, the tape that was um, referred to the committee for the investigations to be done um, has some distortions. So he was alleging before the committee or in his testimony, he suggested that some of, some aspects of the recording valid, other aspects may have been distorted or may have been, doctored. you know, doctored mm -hmm. or, or and, and, and all of that. And so a new tape <clears throat> therefore made it into the proceedings and then the committee needed to deal with that. And all of these are allied to the original mandate of the committee, mm -hmm. find out if the tape could be authenticated. Okay. So that having been said, you would remember that when these two were making their testimonies or testifying before the, the committee, particularly COP Mensa, he said certain things that were potentially damaging to the image of Dampare. Okay. And these were things that were said publicly. So the rule is that when a person is not at a particular you know, tribunal or place where discussions are being held about him, that person subsequently will be given an opportunity to respond to the specific claims that have been made about him. So for instance, COP Mensa said that the IGP was the worst ever recorded in our history mm -hmm. or to be appointed in our history. Mm. Now, that is an opinion that should necessarily be backed by some facts, right? We are told by the committee that they were not going to hear those facts in the public domain. They will hear the facts behind the scenes mm -hmm. in camera. What we do not know is whether those uh, behind the scenes you know, hearings have been done. But you see, because that matter, that claim was made in the public domain, it was necessary that the IGP will be heard publicly on that particular matter. Now, the other side of the matter has to do with 
the tape and whether it could be authenticated mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Of course, the suggestion was made before the committee by COP Mensa that the IGP caused the recording to be made, which is to say that somehow the IGP allegedly became aware of this so-called plot to remove him and potentially knew the people involved and the venue at which the discussion was going to be had and therefore detailed people to go to the place and bag the place or put wires in the place so that they could capture. And according to COP Mensa, if his testimony is to be believed, the people after recording sent the tape recording to the IGP and the suggestion is made before the committee or was made before the committee that the IGP either directly or played a role in the tape getting into the public domain. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that was the basis upon which the IGP was invited so that he could be heard publicly on whether he actually played a role or actually caused <coughs> the recording to be made okay. and whether he actually leaked the same or played a part in leaking it allegedly to the media or to the public. So you would note that first there was an attempt to offer him a platform to speak to the specific matter of whether in his view he happens to be the worst ever thing to happen to the position of IGP. And in dealing with that, you heard how he you know, responded specifically to the matter of what he has done with his team. And you would listen to the, 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 the testimony, you come to the conclusion that this a person who, from what he said, at all times, consciously acts in a way that brings along everybody within the hierarchy of the police service. That's, at least that's what he suggested. And that, that's, that has not been disputed ever since he made those claims. So that everything was about the team Everything was about us. Everything, what we did and, 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 and all of that. So that spoke to the specific allegation of whether he was aware. The, the programs that he's instituted, those that he's continued, the mistakes that were made, the lessons that were learned and, and, and all of that. And then the aspect of the recording itself, he told the committee that he did not cause the recording to be made and by necessary implication played no part in its being leaked to the media okay. or, or, or the public. So those two levels, in my view, have been satisfied. Now, the question is whether on the basis of what we heard, we can say that the IGP's public image, which took a lot of hit in the immediate aftermath of the, the, the initial tip making it in the public domain, and then also the subsequent commentary or testimony given by COP Mensa particularly, now, when he said that the IGP was the worst thing to happen to that office, a lot of people began asking questions about George Ekufu Dampere. Because you remember that when he came into office, a certain major transformation has happened not only to the image of the service, but also how they deal with a number of public-facing things. For instance, previously, when suspects are arrested, you see their photographs splashed all over social media, mm -hmm. right? Subsequently, these people are found not to have even done anything wrong. But the fact that their photographs made into to the public domain, they are damaged forever, right? But he intervened, as we understand it, to say that, look, it's impro or not professional. Even if you are putting out a photograph, make sure that you sense that there's been something that I've been complaining about mm -hmm. consistently yeah. on, 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 on our network. So he intervened to sanitize that. Again, these days, if you drive through Accra, if you are conscious in aware traffic intersections, you have traffic lights and all of that, the motorbike people, they are becoming, you know, <laughs> you see, they are watching the, the, the traffic light. <laughs> so you don't see them running through and creating problems because the people, the police officers also have moto. So if you have moto guzi and you do the thing, they will chase you and arrest you. That is progress. Go to the police headquarters. Previously, it was a haven for all kinds of things. People go in there anyhow. Um, the place was just one big mess. It did not look like a professional institution capable of providing us with security. If you go there now, 
I believe with the support that he may have had from or, or cooperation that he may have had with the, from the current administration and parliament and related institutions, he's been able to give that institution a new face together with his team, as he emphasized. So when you go to the police service and you look out, oh, this is the headquarters of the Ghana police service, you'll be happy with that. And we are told <coughs> that the plan is to ensure that across the country, that sense of professionalism and outlook, you can feel and see it. That is progress. Now, you don't engage, as Amens will tell you, in change management of the kind that he's seeking to execute without stepping on, you know. <laughs> people who think, oh, I've been, I've been here for too long. Why should it be this person? What? Problems will come up. Of course, he's not, he said it yesterday that he's not perfect. But is he doing something that is positive? Do we want to see a police service that is professional? Nathan, do you want you know, a friend to walk out of his house, get arrested for one thing or the other, when in fact he didn't do it? His photograph is all over the place. The media has published it. Decimated for life. Do you want to see that? Of course, we work in the media. We will not be happy that the police service now enforces a robust rule that... You, do, you can't speak to this PRO, you can't speak to blah, blah, blah. Of course, people will not be happy. Previously, this journalist is talking to that person on this FM station, and they are saying all kinds of things, many contradictions. <laughs> and you cannot see a common thread that is in sync with what they actually want to communicate, which actually represents the facts. I will not be happy that he says, oh, don't talk to A, B, blah, blah. But the fact is, it's brought some sanity now, can we encourage him to create some loophole so that even where the rule is enforced that don't talk to, you know, these guys anyhow, but there should be some professionalism around it so that we can still get access to information without these things being compromised. We can advocate mm -hmm. for, for these things. But the impression was created that this thing, this guy... Is not what we all believe he is. He is the is is bad news for the police service, and and so forth and so on. People began calling for his head. Now, is it the case that in the the recent by elections, mm -hmm. previously we saw by elections in this country? Yeah. If you don't remember, Ayawa so West were gone. <laughs> A whole member of parliament was giving you know some serious assault. Till today, nobody has been punished. For that thing, right? People got maimed. You go to, you know, other parts of the country. Yep. By-elections were held. Violence all over the place. Now, he made an important point yesterday. That if you play the game locally, we'll keep it local. In other words, if you consider that a by-election is confined to the people who are taking a decision as to who should represent them in parliament, yeah. within that locality, it is their matter. Let them discuss it. The political parties there keep it local. They don't bring big boys from Accra, import hoodlums from all over the place to come and create problems. We will keep it local. But the moment you elevate it to maybe a regional election and all kinds of people from all kinds of angles are there to create problems, we will also elevate it. And if it has to get to the national level, we will do that. And we have seen how he handled the... Uh, is it Kumewu or what's the name? Yeah. Is it Kumeu by election, right? Yes. Right. Kumeu election, and then yeah. they just ended um, uh, it, uh, the, one in the central region. The central region. So Sinop. if you are a Ghanaian, you go and you vote and you go back home safe and sound. Nobody has slapped you. Nobody has chopped off your arm. Nobody has shot you. Would you not be happy about that? Is that not the job of the police service? Now, the reason this matter has become a big matter is that the suggestion was made that um, you know, some party is not happy with him and therefore they would want to remove him and all of that. That is why Parliament is investigating it. But on the score of what the man has been able to deliver thus far and how he projected himself before the committee with the greatest respect to anybody who thinks otherwise, I think he, that, he did a fine job yesterday. Mm, okay. He communicated rightly he used the right tone. He used the, the right kind of words. In some cases, he was a bit, you know, saying he's a liar and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that one. But he sent the message home. And, and, and for me, 
I, I think he walked away with his image intact and reinforced. And if you had any doubt that is this the right person to occupy the position of IGP as, at this time, I will risk my image and say that I think he is. He's the right guy. Regardless of whatever opinions you, on the evidence of what he has said, which evidence hasn't been thus far contradicted, I think that he's doing a fine job and we should just allow him to do his job. Of course, the president is the appointing authority. Maybe he has some information that we don't have. If for any reason he decides to disappoint, that's up to him. Mm -hmm. But I think it will be an act of swimming against the tide. If we act as a nation hastily and throw this man away, mm. he has done a fine job thus far. And if there is nothing compelling to impeach his image, to throw him away, to discard him. We need people like that in higher office and we should keep him. Ghana will be better for it. Okay. So, what's your thoughts on the IGP's appearance yesterday? <laughs> I, I, I don't think I, I would depart from, from um, Richard's position on, mm. on, on this, his observations. But, you know, I, I, I was talking to... Um, you know, a senior police officer okay. uh, sometime last week. And then he said to me that, look, these, these, these kinds of conversations about the way IGPs have conducted themselves, we always do it in the police service, you know, among ourselves. <clears throat> <laughs> but this is the first time we've pushed it beyond the limit. Okay. Now, <clears throat> somebody's expression of Mere hatred, gone bonkers. That's how I, I look at the thing. <clears throat> if, <clears throat> if we had asked these persons to write how they felt, write officially, mm -hmm. write how they felt about the IGP before this whole committee thing, I'm not sure they would have written the kind of things they are saying. <laughs> why, why, why did you say so? <clears throat> I'm not sure. You know, have you found yourself in a situation where you are insulting somebody, not knowing that the person is standing behind you? <laughs> <laughs> and then after making the insult the statement, you turn and, and the then you see that the person is there. You want to continue. With <laughs> <laughs> you know, I see it within that context. Like, look, yeah, can, yeah, can. Let's, let's, let's whatever say, mm -hmm. happens will happen. Mm -hmm. But for me, this is like putting behind you over three decades of police service, mm -hmm. you know, on the line. Because how they conduct themselves during this investigation can, has the potential of unmaking them. Okay. The okay. police service. Yes. Okay. No, no, I mean the individuals. The individuals, all right. Okay. Because you, they, well, a lot of them have worked for over 30 years, 20, 30 years. So this episode can just make you, you're a commissioner. If you are removed from the service, it means that you lose everything that you have done. You, you get me? So I think that yesterday's, um, the way... Uh, IGP Dampari um, showed up the way he was articulate about the issues. It was something very admirable. And it sends a signal for appointing authorities mm -hmm. that for such critical roles, the key thing is about competence and people that you, the appointing authority, you can be proud of okay. in the face of difficulties. And I think um, this whole thing of, oh, is the, the government wants to remove the IGP. And I'm asking, but if the government wants to remove the IGP, is that how they, they, they will do it? That they will send some police officers to go and meet somebody? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I love the, the whole restoration of the Ghana Police Service. And that's, by, by saying that is not to suggest that everything is perfect. 
some young police officers are still taking money from people. <laughs> some police officers are still stealing. Some police, you know, all yeah, but that's that's the community that you have. But by and large, we see a better, a better police service. The okay. crime rate has gone down significantly. Arm robbery, reports of arm robbery has gone down significantly. And it's not by chance. Okay? The police resourcing the police service has seen a significant increase. And that's not to say all their problems have been mm -hmm. solved. The other day I was saying, I think on TV, a young police um, 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 officer or who I was just, oh, what do you think about IGP Dampari? Then she told me that, oh, me ask for Dampari, I don't like him more. A, a female police. Mm. I said, okay, so what is the problem? He said, eh, eh, then he's speaking to you. You know, a police for, I don't know, my sister, or my sister, Pentem, no, across the red lighter. No, watch him, watch him. And I said, I said, you know, a police for, not me, can be our man, yeah, too. And then another guy who also said that, oh, me, they mean, pen, mean, pen, be a, eh, eh, my brother in law, or eh, traffic offense, kakra, or mu the new court, eh, jenny, 300 Ghana. Eh, wo court, or me, eh, charging the 300 Ghana. So the problem, the, 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 these are the issues why they claim that they don't like the IGP. That they are also police officers, and that if they, 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 are, they are wrong, with their law crap or because they are in yeah. national uniform, you know, they should allow them and this is the privilege they should have. And you are telling me at Amensa. You are just telling the wrong person. I just didn't take their names. <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying that so I think that we should give the man a chance. And I don't believe that the government wants to sack him. Okay. I, I do not believe. You don't believe it. Then there will definitely be elements within the party structures who would have wanted to have their way with certain things, especially when it comes to elections. Mm -hmm. And not having their way might cause some disaffection. It's normal. The IGP was not placed there so people will clap for him. Because the criminals are not always the people outside politics or outside the governing system. There are criminals in the governing system. There are criminals in the political mm -hmm. space. So they are, they are everywhere. So definitely decisions, policies, implementation will wrong some people. And it's understandable. But this boxing everything up that yeah, and, and the, the government wants to remove him. I don't believe that the government wants to remove him. I don't speak for the government, but I do not believe. Yes, you see, is everybody in government happy with him? It's possible people are not happy with him. But... I think in our modern day Ghana or another fourth Republican uh, uh, era, this team of police, of uh, what do you call it, management, is the best we have seen. I mean, I stand to be corrected, but I am saying that in my media life, and, you, almost, and, and you've seen a good number of IGPs, years, this is the team that have come close to restoring. Mm. The order in the police service, the image of the police service, and bringing... I mean, look, in, in, the, in our media space, when was the last time you heard of armed robberies? Mm. When was the last time? I mean, you see police people all over the yeah. place. Police even, presence even is very, very... Street, street, street robberies. Street I mean, they, they're almost non-existent. And you think it's not, it's not value for the country? It is. So, so I think that in 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 our effort to express our misgivings and to in in, in extreme forms some level of hatred for the man, we should still be reasonable. We should still be reasonable. Maybe we had yet to see the evidence that they have in calling him the West IGP. They are police people. We are not. But at the receiving end, we would dare say that. Is one of the best that we have experienced That's as right. a management. And yesterday, look, I was in full admiration for the commanders and the commissioners that came with him. From COP, Yohunu, and all the all people the that... I mean, Yohunu sat right behind the man in full support. 
and you are telling me that the man takes decisions all alone by himself. <laughs> he actually even referenced minutes that everything he did was on the basis of decisions taken by the team. Mm. But you think people like you know they are small boys. <laughs> they've, they've been around for years. They, you they see know they are the commissioner, you know, sitting down. You think he's a small boy. And if you have dealt with IGP Dampare before, he will not elevate himself because he's IGP. Mm. So long as you are older than him. And the police will tell you, yes, maybe for whatever is worth, you know what you have done for whoever, for which reason you think you deserve to be IGP. You may be right. You may be right that you deserve to be IGP. But it's just not your time. <laughs> it's just not your time. That's how, that's how the universe is structured. You may have an opportunity, but it's not your time. Because the Bible says time and, and chance. chance.